Hey guys, um, unfortunately my other, uh, the other video that I had made today was, um, got messed up in the computer, so I'm just going to walk you guys through the notes that we took. Our, our, our topic of today was we, we were solving quadratics with the quadratic formula, and uh, we solved it. Solving quadratics with the quadratic formula just involves plugging into an equation. But specifically, we, were, we, we had to describe the roots, and that was something new. Describing the roots involves three separate things. You have to tell me whether it's real or whether it's imaginary, whether it's rational or the opposite of being rational, irrational, and whether it's equal, in other words, whether we just got one root, or whether it was unequal and we got two roots. By the way, if, if the roots turn out to be imaginary, you don't have to do the rest of these steps. You'll see. And you'll see what I mean uh, in a minute or two. So take a look at our notes for today, right? Here was the original problem up over here, and then we listed out A, B, and C. A being this number, B being this number, C being this number. This is the quadratic formula right here, and what I highlighted in, in uh, yellow is something called the, the discriminant, and we're going to talk about that more tomorrow. Whatever the discriminant turns out to be tells us what kind of roots we have, but you'll see in a minute. So here's the quadratic formula. Take the numbers you got for A, B, and C and plug into it. Simplify it down. And it turns out the discriminant in this particular case was 0. Now adding a 0, plusing, plusing or minus 0 to anything doesn't change the number. So you just get negative 6 over here. And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So how would you describe the roots? The answer that we got? Well, first of all, negative 3 is a real number. It's definitely a rational number. And there's only one of them, so it's equal. If you were to try and look at this on your calculator, you'd see that the graph of the quadratic equation itself touches the x-axis once. And that's what it means to have one root. Okay, problem number two. Problem number two, now we started putting coefficients in front of x squared. It doesn't really make a difference because all we're going to do is list out a, b, and c, fill them out. Take notice that b is not 5, but rather negative 5. And c, and then, you know, write out the quadratic formula, plug into it, simplify down, and... Uh, and take a look. So we've got x equals plus or minus 1 over 6. And these are the roots. The roots are 1 and 2 thirds. How would you describe that? Well, 1 and 2 thirds are certainly real numbers. They're certainly rational. Rational means can be expressed as a fraction. And they're unequal. They're two, two different roots. Finally, the third problem that we took a look at today was 2x squared equals 3x minus 7. And this one's a little tricky because, well, in order to use the quadratic formula, you have to make sure it is set equal to 0 before you go and find a, b, and c. So take all of this business over here, subtract it over or add it, whatever you've got to do to make one side 0 to the other side, and then go and find a, b, and c. a is 2, and b is negative 3, and c is 7. Plug into this formula, which you're going to have to know for Friday, and check it out. When you plug in and simplify it down, you get a negative 47 underneath the square root. It is impossible to take the square root of a negative number. It won't work. And so as soon as you reach this step right here, you can stop. Just tell me the roots are imaginary, and that's it, at least for right now. The only thing that I do want you to do, though, is, is that when you see that negative right there, right, I want you to pull this negative out, and I want you to put an I in front. That's to remind us that the roots are imaginary. Then the number underneath the radical is just 47. So that's where this i comes from. This means that this means it's an imaginary root. 
Now this plus or minus, how do you take care of it? That's what I wrote down over here. X is equal to 3 plus I rad 47 divided by 4 and 3 minus I rad 47 divided by 4. Two separate roots, but they're imaginary. You don't have to describe them any other way, you know. If you were to look at these, this particular equation in the calculator, in other words, if you were to take this equation right here and plug it into your calculator, this is the picture that you would get. As you can see, it doesn't touch the x-axis. And just as the name says, imaginary, right, you can't touch things in your imagination, right? The roots are imaginary, so it won't touch the x-axis. Real roots, just like stuff in real life that you can touch, do touch the x-axis. Let's take a look at the other problem before, problem number two. Those roots were real. Look, it touches the x-axis. So you can use your calculator to evaluate these problems as well. The only other thing that we had to do for today was I did give a bit of homework, and that's here. You have four separate problems where I want you to solve them using quadratic formula, and I want you to describe the roots. Describing the roots, let's go back to the very beginning, describing the roots entails you telling me whether they were real or imaginary, rational or irrational, equal or unequal. If you get imaginary roots, just stop right there. You don't need to do the rest of these.